Welcome to the Be Great Podcast, where greatness is a lifestyle, an addiction, an obsession. My life has two missions, to be the world's greatest father and to grow the Nova House into a billion dollar portfolio. To do this, I need to become great, great in my health, relationships, business, and leadership. I'm here to document the lessons I learned along the way in hopes they serve you in your never-ending pursuit for greatness. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you choose to be great today. Welcome. I'm your host, Tyler Jordan, and today we're going to be learning about how to become an LP investor. I've got two bonus tips at the end as to how to become great at LP investing. So first off, what is LP investing? LP means limited partner. Now, if you actually can go back into some of my previous episodes where I've spoken about what is a real estate syndication, how is, what is a GP, general partner, what is an LP, limited partner, active investing, passive investing, et cetera. I go into all the details of that. Uh, it's one of the first episodes I recorded. So go back and check that out. Um, and I'll give you all of the down low on that. So you've decided that you want to become a limited partner in investments, in syndications, meaning you want to uh, support some syndications, be involved, uh, take a share in it and get paid passively. Today, we're going to run through how to do that. Now, we have nine steps today, nine steps of how to do it and two steps on how to be great at it. And by the end of this, I hope to, well, my goal is that you have an easy to use checklist that you can just go through as a, almost like a little workbook yourself and just fill in the blanks for each of them. And in a matter of, you know, 20, 30 minutes, uh, you will have all of your outlay on how to do your LP investing. Uh, or if you're already an LP, how to do better LP investing, or maybe you're better than I am at it. And you're like, damn, this is how not to do LP investing. I don't know. Um, I'm just telling you what, what I know as the best ways to do LP investing through experience and watching it happen over and over and over again. So step number one is the biggest one. It is the golden ticket to becoming an LP investor successfully. If you skip number one or you do not spend majority of your time on step number one, you lose, even if you win, right? And I want to repeat that. You lose even if you win. That's a big, that's a big issue. And step number one is decide what you want. Do you want a tax play? Do you want tax breaks? Do you want an, an income play? Something that you know maybe doesn't grow in a big way but pro provides you income. Are you trying to replace your income? Are you wanting that growth where maybe you don't really need income for the next few years, but you're looking to make an exit on you know two or three X your money? Are you just trying to preserve your capital and have it not be eaten away by inflation? Are you looking for diversification? You know, you need to know what you want. Here's a kicker. What if you just want bragging rights? What if you're like, I want to invest into like the coolest types of things or wild and wacky. I want to invest into whiskey uh, or I want to invest into precious metals or whatever it might be. Uh, investing into something that you just want to brag to your friends about. That is step number one. And that's the big one because that determines everything is knowing what you want to get out of this. Once you have figured that out, step number two is decide which asset class you want to be in uh, that aligns with what it is that you want. Let's say, for instance, that you are, all that you want is income. That's the only thing that you want. Then maybe going into large multi multifamily deals is the way to go for you. Something that you know, maybe it doesn't grow an exponential amount over, you know, a few years, but it provides you with a, a bunch of income on your investment. Uh, if it's growth, maybe you go into development plays where you might not see anything for two to three years, but, you know, sometimes even longer, but then you're getting that, that big exit um, once the property sells or, you know, is refinanced or whatever it might be. So based on what you want, 
find the asset class that best provides that. You've got multifamily, which is probably going to be the best for income. Uh, you've got short-term rentals, which is income and growth. Uh, if it's a development play, uh, industrial storage, you know, they're primarily income plays. Um, I'm not super well versed in tax plays, so I don't want to lean into tax plays uh, much at all. So I will avoid that. But find the asset class that best aligns with it, what, with what it is that you want. Once you have found the asset class you want to be in, let's say that it is multifamily. Let's say that you want income, then you're getting into multifamily. Then step number three is find sponsors in that niche. Sponsors meaning people, general partners, sponsors, operators. There's so many different names for them, uh, which I go into in that episode I was speaking about. But find people in your niche. Now, how do you find them? I've got a list here. You can find them through LinkedIn, through basic searches on LinkedIn on you know multifamily or general partners uh, or finding somebody in the industry you're in and then basically using that as almost a domino, then finding someone in their network and then finding someone in their network and moving on and on and on until you're, you've got this big network of multifamily general partners. You can just do a Google search as a second option. But the third option and the one that I most recommend is ask the most savvy real estate people that you know for referrals, whether that's the developer down the road, if you know a syndicator, even if they're not in the same industry, Ask the most savvy people in real estate that you know, because that is where you're going to get the strongest referrals with the most amount of credibility uh, that you can that you can have. Uh, which is, I mean, if you're if you're watching this, you're you're going you're going to be getting into real estate. Uh, so I'm assuming that if you're asking a developer with ten years of experience, that they probably know a bit more than you do. So there's some kind of backing to the referral that they give. Uh, and if they don't know anyone, you could even ask them and say, where, sh where would I be able to find uh, a multifamily syndicator? I want to get involved in some deals. Uh, step number four is get all information from them, whether it is via an email, whether it is via an investor portal, whether it is via uh, some kind of a Google Drive or whatever it might be. Everyone does things differently. Uh, the easiest way is going to be if they have an investor portal. Um, second easiest is if they have it all manually done. Whatever it might be, uh, get all the information from them. This includes the PPM, all of your legal documents, your subscription agreements, your operating agreements, get their pitch deck, uh, get their underwriting for the deals. Everything that you can possibly get uh, about the deal that they are working on right now or offering, you want to get. Once you have that, you move to step number five, is doing your own research on it. Go through their underwriting. M make sure it all checks off. Does it even make sense? Are there things in there that just seem out of place? Does it seem too good to be true? Does it seem like something's wrong? Uh, you know, go through their legal documents, go through their PPM, go through their subscription agreements, go through their pitch deck, go through it with a, with a set of eyes a second or a third time with a set of eyes that says, you know, what if I'm skeptical of this? I'm going to look at it through a skeptical lens. Uh, you want to go through it as thoroughly as you can before you move to step number six. And step number six is get a second opinion on it. Find a lawyer, find an attorney, find said real savvy real estate person that you went to for advice uh, and ask them to have a look at it. Maybe even go and find your local developer, uh, the people that you met on LinkedIn who are in real estate, uh, in developments or in syndications or whatever it might be that maybe you didn't uh, use or you, or you use them as a connector. Maybe you can go to them and say, hey, I'd love to get a second opinion on this. Here are the materials. Uh, could you please go through it and, you know, let me know what you think. Does this make sense? And maybe you can even ask them some specific questions. Say, I'm kind of concerned about X, Y, and Z. Could you have a look at X, Y, and Z for me and tell me what you think? Uh, now, you want to make sure these people are as credible as possible, even if it costs you money to have someone give you a second opinion, like an attorney uh, or even, you know, an accountant or whatever it might be. Someone with some kind of knowledge in the field that you're, you know, you're looking into. Step number seven is meet the sponsor if you're able to. I 
promise you, I promise you, I promise you, this is a worthwhile step. Even if it's a flight, I personally believe it's worth it. Even on smaller dollar amounts, these people are about to become a huge part of your life. You're about to trust them with a big uh, amount of money, whether that's a big amount of money for you right now, or if you're starting small, it's going to be a big amount of money in the future. Uh, whatever it might be, they're going to become a big part of your life and you want to make sure that you know them, you trust them, and you get that, for lack of a better word, feel good feeling from them. I cannot tell you how many times I've I've thought something online or I've met someone online or whatever it might be, and I've gone through these months, months worth of you know, friendship or or you know, business relationship, whatever it might be, and then I've met that person in real life and walked away knowing that I am 100% not going to be dealing with that person moving forward. Uh, there was Everything was off about the situation. Uh, and I, I promise you it's worth it. So if you can meet the sponsor, uh, even if it's just for a coffee or for a lunch, whatever it might be, even if it's a flight, let's say it's a flight. Let's say that you are in Chicago and you're, the sponsor that you want to be investing into is in Dallas. Now, the flight might cost you $500 return. You might have to you know, you could do it same day, but if you don't want to do it same day, it might be 250, 300 bucks in a hotel room uh, plus food. You're probably looking at a thousand bucks all in to go and meet this person. Now, a thousand dollars is right. No one wants to drop a thousand bucks in, in two days to, to do this or a day. But if that thousand dollars then saves you tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future, or makes you tens or hundreds or millions of dollars in the future, I would say that $1,000 is one of the best ROIs you could ever get. Uh, and still to this day, uh, and I'm very proud of this, still to this day, there is not an investor of ours that I have not personally met. Uh, sorry, when I say I, either myself or Martin, uh, there isn't one that I haven't, haven't met. Uh, once you have done your due diligence, you've got a, you've got a, a second opinion or a third opinion on it, and you have met the sponsor, you are at a point where any more work, any more due diligence, any more pondering, any more thinking is just going to over, you, you're going to have analysis paralysis. Uh, they say that you, the, the perfect ratio of information is 75%. Anything less, you're under-informed, and anything more, you're too informed to make a decision. Uh, so once you have gone through those steps, you've met the sponsor and everything is lining up, sign the documents and wire the funds and begin your LP journey. Now, I have seen in so many cases, not just with us, so many deals, people get to that step and then they go back to step number four and they go back and they say, okay, I want triple the amount of information and I want to have a, a fifth set of eyes looking at it and I want to I want to meet for uh, two more lunches and I want to it just becomes this rabbit uh this um uh hamster wheel rabbit <laughs> it becomes this hamster wheel where you can't get enough information and you end up searching for something wrong it's not that you're, you're, you're no longer searching for success. You're searching for a problem. And if, whatever you're searching for, you will find. Even if it's one number that might be off or a decimal point in the wrong spot or what, something just ridiculous. Like you might find a Facebook post from the sponsor 15 years ago that doesn't align with you. Whatever you're looking for, I guarantee you'll find it. For anyone in the, in the world, for whatever you're looking for, you will find it if you're looking hard enough. So. 75% is the perfect amount. Go through your due diligence, do it properly. Don't then get to the decision-making part, start again and keep going through. At that point, you're wasting your own time, you're wasting your own money, you're wasting your own mental effort and you're wasting the other person on the other end of the lines as well. Now, well, before we get the bonus steps, I wanna re-go over those nine. Now, if you have a checklist, you have a pen and paper, whatever it might be, please jot these down. Number one, decide what you want. This is crucial, tax, growth, income, preservation, diversification, bragging rights, whatever it is, decide what it is that you want. Step number two, decide what asset class best aligns with what you want. Is it multifamily? Is it industrial? Is it short-term rentals? Is it development plays of short-term rentals? Is it um, 
overseas developments. Like we do overseas short-term rentals or overseas luxury short-term rentals. Um, you know, that is a high growth and then turns into an income play. So, you know, find the vehicle that best suits the needs that you want. Number three is find the sponsors in that niche through LinkedIn, Google, or the best one is ask the most savvy real estate people that you know for referrals or who might be best to talk with. Once you've done that, get all the information from that sponsor, your PPM, your legal docs, your pitch deck, your underwriting, anything and everything that you can about the deal uh, and the sponsor. Step number five is to do your own research. Step number six, get a second opinion on it. Step number seven, meet the sponsor if you are able to, even if it is a long drive and or a flight, it will be the best ROI you ever spend, I promise. Step number eight is sign documents. Step number nine is wire funds. So in 15 minutes, we have learned how to become an LP investor and how to do it really well. But two more steps, and we're about to go from good to great. Step, or bonus step, number one. Once you are invested, ask the sponsor, what are the things that you can do that would be helpful? And in every deal, in every syndication, in every asset class, in every everything, there is always going to be a way that you can be of value, even as an LP. Are they raising capital? Maybe, you know, they need help raising more capital and everyone needs help raising capital. Even if you're raising billions, it's you're never going to turn down the offer when someone says, hey, I could help bring more capital. So maybe you could tell everyone about the, the offer and get more investors. You could make them referrals. Um, you can even talk. This can benefit you as well because, A, your deal is raising more funds. And, B, you might be able to get a finder's fee um, for introducing them to someone who invests. And you can even talk, if you don't want that in cash, you can even talk to them about getting that finder's fee turned into equity so that you have a bigger position in the deal, you didn't even put any money in. You've just referred someone. Now you've got more, you've got a bigger spot in that deal uh, and you're going to get paid on that. So it's it's a win-win. Maybe you know some people in the area that the deal is in that would be helpful contacts. It might be a, a great plumber. It might be a great architect. It might be a, a great uh, management company. It might be a great cleaning service. It might... I, I, it could be anything. But if you know someone in the area and you've got great contacts there, connect them. That's fantastic. For every value add that you have as an LP, I promise you're becoming even more valuable in the GP's eyes. Um, and you're helping your own investment. The better that your investment goes, the more that you get. So be of service in, 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 the, in, in as many ways as you can. If you don't know how to be of service, and even if you do know how to be of service, I recommend reaching out to your GP and asking them how best you could be of service, even as an LP. The second bonus step on how to be a great LP investor is every three to five years, and I want to, I want to hit home on this, is every three to five years, not every six months, not every one year, not every two years, but a minimum of every three years. You want to reallocate capital from poorly performing assets to strong assets. Now, the reason that I'm so heavy on three years being the minimum is everything goes in cycles. If you are reallocating and trying to reposition yourself every six to 12 months, you are trying to continuously jump through this cycle of the grass is greener, the grass is greener, the grass is greener. And I guarantee you the grass might be greener, for the current two months that you're looking, but the grass is not always greener and you will, you cannot build wealth continuously jumping around and over and over and over again. The market goes in cycles, things go up, things go down. And in real estate, nothing happens in two weeks. Nothing happens in two months. Everything happens over multiple years. Uh, in a really fast movements, things happen over you know six to 12 months time. Uh, but yes, I would say three year minimum, um, yeah, in that three to five year mark, start looking at, you know, removing capital from poorly performing assets and then reallocating it to the things that are continuously doing well. Now, if you have gotten any value out of this, the value that you can bring to me is rating this podcast, uh, 
showing some love. Let me know if there's anything that you would like to know about LP investing that maybe you don't know right now. Maybe it's something that I have gone over and you're like, that doesn't make any sense, Tyler. Didn't understand your accent. Maybe you said something that was Australian that I needed translated to American, whatever it might be. Hit me up, the comments, my DMs, LinkedIn, book a call, our website, thenovahouse.com, whatever it is. I would love to hear from you. Uh, and I would love you, for you to share this with a friend who is also looking to get into LP investing. Until then, be great.